cool guys how are you doing so then probably you are a bit tired but let's try to find a little bit more of energy and go through it uh, so we continue our discussion of kinematics and uh, first we will shortly recall what we discussed previous time so we discussed motion along axis x like one uh, dimensional case uh, motion along a straight line and in that case in order to define the direction of motion it was enough to set the sign of displacement positive or negative so that was easy we should not de deal with any vectors in the scope of this model we uh, introduced concepts of uh, velocity and acceleration which are instantaneous velocity and acceleration so they uh, give us the exact value of these parameters at any moment of time and that is the key requirement to know in order to proceed further and derive so-called kinematic equation which describes position of an object at any moment of time in the scope of some given system of reference last time it was straight line some x is x uh, we derive this uh, kinematic equation considering the condition of constant acceleration and uh, also considered some transformation of this kinematic equation when we substitute uh, time uh, t uh, as independent parameter and could express um, position like velocity as a function of position or in the contrary you can express obviously uh, position as a function of velocity uh, avoiding using time as independent parameter which can be quite useful so that was done for one dimensional case today we make one step further and consider uh, two dimensional uh, case when we already have to deal with vectors because uh, initial position will be given by position vector then we will have some uh, velocity vector and acceleration vector so in order to uh, know how to work with them we will introduce again uh, velocity instantaneous velocity and accelerations but already in a vector form and uh, write the kinematic equation general kinematic equation in vector form which allows us to describe position of um, a, a body an object in uh, space at any given moment of time uh, so that uh, is our goal and we will also consider some example of this to the motion in two-dimensional space with constant acceleration <clears throat> so let us start we have already a system of coordinates we have already not only axis x but also axis y let's consider some trajectory of motion and here we consider point one so let's say it's some initial uh, position of the body and how we define this position we have so-called position vector so that will be r1 vector uh, let's say after some time interval this body will move from point one along this trajectory to point two which is described by its position vector r2 vector so now we have two position vectors but we also have this initial and final point which we consider in the scope of this consideration this example <clears throat> and we can also introduce here a displacement vector which connects initial and final position of the body and that will be delta r change of position vector so this is 
maybe let's go for colorful version so this is uh, displacement uh, vector delta r vector so now let us uh, introduce the concept of instantaneous velocity vector which is required to describe our like motion in the two-dimensional space so in general we can write that v vector instantaneous velocity vector uh, will be equal to limit delta t approaches to zero delta r vector divided by delta t and that is nothing else that is nothing else as the first derivative of displacement vector dr over time <clears throat> so that is definition of velocity vector in multi-dimensional space doesn't matter if it's two or uh, three-dimensional space and also we need to introduce another important parameter which is instantaneous acceleration so a vector is equal to the limit delta t approaches to zero here we have delta r sorry not delta v vector divided by delta t uh, and uh, um, it can be represented as first derivative of velocity vector over time or second derivative of position vector like displacement vector uh, uh, with respect to um, time uh, so it will be d r vector d square r vector d t square so that is definition of uh, instantaneous velocity and acceleration vectors and uh, now we can already proceed with uh, answering the main question of kinematics of motion in uh, two and three dimensional space we want to know position vector as a function of time at any moment so that is our goal we need to have this equation so how we do this in order to make our life easier uh, you should recall from our previous discussion we had this uh, guys unit vectors which allow us to split any vector uh, to two components when we are talking about two dimensions case along axis x and along axis y so that's obviously what we want to do because then it's easy to do calculations uh, with such uh, vectors so we can represent our position vector as sum of two vectors it will be x times i unit vector plus y times j unit vector now um, in the same manner we can proceed further with the definition of velocity vectors and acceleration vectors so for instance for velocity vector we know that it is first derivative of position vector over time and that is dx over dt times i unit vector plus dy over dt times j unit vector uh, <clears throat> so what are these guys these are projection of velocity vector on axis x and y so we can represent them as vx times i unit vector plus vy times j unit vector <clears throat> now uh, we have these values vx and vy so keep in mind that they are along a straight line vx is velocity along x, x vy along x is y so we already know uh, how to describe uh, velocity of motion along a straight line with constant acceleration because we discussed it 
earlier. So we can now um, extrapolate this knowledge towards two-dimensional case, but uh, specifically when we discussed uh, two components of the velocity vector uh, along axis x and axis y. So for this vx and vy, we can write that vx is equal to vx naught, some initial value for uh, this x component of velocity vector, plus ax times t. And here will be vy equal to vy naught plus ay times t. So that is uh, <coughs> our expression, which we uh, borrow from previous discussion. Um, and that is true for each of these projections. Uh, also, what is important to mention here, if we have constant acceleration vector, a vector is equal to constant, then a x and a y, they are also constant. They don't change over time. So we can use uh, just uh, constant uh, values for this uh, acceleration projection of acceleration vector al along axis x and y. <clears throat> so now uh, let us substitute these expressions here and this one here in order to get the uh, general equation for um, velocity vector. So velocity vector is equal to vx naught plus ax times t uh, times i unit vector plus vy naught plus ay times t uh, times j unit vector. So now, let us open this parenthesis and group velocity to velocity and acceleration to acceleration. So that will be vx naught times i unit vector plus vy naught times j unit vector plus now acceleration time. Uh, it will be ax times i unit vector plus a y times j unit vector and that is times t. So now we see that we have actually two components of this velocity vector. One component here is v naught vector and another component is a vector. Uh, <clears throat> so Eventually, we can write that velocity vector v will be equal to the initial velocity vector v naught plus a vector times t. So that is for constant acceleration vector. And this is the uh, general form which describes the um, time dependence of velocity vector. Uh, and uh, we can also represent it graphically. So let us consider a system of coordinates x and y. Here will be our initial velocity vector, v naught vector. Here will be our acceleration vector times t. And obviously, as a sum of these two vectors, we will get some resultant vector, which is our velocity vector v. And of course, uh, that is just graphical representation, but when we do any uh, calculations, we obviously will operate with this uh, unit vectors because it is convenient. Never doesn't matter what we do, add or multiply vectors later or whatever. So we now have information for velocity vector and uh, our next task is to get the same expression for uh, position vector. So we remember from previous uh, lecture that we derived this 
kinematic equation for motion along straight line with constant acceleration. So how did it look? So we have x equal to x naught initial position plus what is next? v naught initial velocity v naught times t plus a times t squared divided by 2. Good. So we have this equation. And that is actually true for the projection of position vector on axis x. However, since we have two coordinates now, uh, two dimensional case, we also need to write it for y component. So it will be y naught plus uh, that here it actually, we need to modify it a little bit. So here we need to consider x uh, naught and ax. And uh, here it will be v y naught times t plus a y times t square divided by 2. So that is true for the projection of uh, position vector on axis uh, y and uh, x as a function of time. So now let us introduce it already in a vector form. When we have position vector as a function of time, that will be equal to, as we mentioned earlier, x times i unit vector plus y times j unit vector. That is equal to, instead of x, we substitute this expression. So it will be x naught plus v x naught times t plus a x times t squared divided by 2 times i unit vector plus y component. So it will be y naught plus v y naught times t plus a y times t squared divided by 2 and divided by, oh, so multiply by j unit vector. Now again, we open parentheses and group initial position, initial velocity, and acceleration vector. <coughs> so we have x naught times i unit vector plus y naught times j unit vector plus now component from initial velocity. That will be v x naught times i unit vector plus v y naught times j unit vector times time t plus uh, term originated from acceleration. It will be a x times i unit vector plus a y times j unit vector times t squared divided by 2. So eventually we have here is our initial vector, position vector, r naught vector. This guy will be our initial velocity vector, v naught vector. And this is our acceleration vector. A. So eventually we can write that position vector as a function of time is equal to initial position vector plus initial velocity vector times time plus our constant acceleration vector times time square divided by 2. So this is the kinematic equation in the uh, vector form. So it can be applicable to all cases when we have motion in uh, different from motion along a straight line. So if there are two or three uh, directions, like dimensions, we can apply this uh, concept and um, determine position vector for um, an object at any given, given moment of time.
So now let us consider. Um, oh, actually, we can also show it graphically, similar to velocity. Let us show it here. We have two axes, x and y. So this will be initial position vector r not zero uh, r not vector, and here we have term originated from initial uh, velocity vector v not vector times t, and additionally we have uh, acceleration vector times t squared divided by two. So eventually our new position vector, r vector, at time t will be given as uh, sum of all these three vectors together. So that's how we define in graphical form. But again, uh, any calculations are first done in um, the form when we deal with unit vectors because that's convenient. So now let us consider some example of uh, motion of an object in two dimensions uh, with constant acceleration. So that is so-called projectile motion, when we have a projectile moving with some initial velocity at some angle with respect to uh, axis x. And uh, <clears throat> in that case, we have constant accelerations because we don't consider like neglect with uh, any drag force of air. Uh, so we have constant acceleration, uh, which is acceleration of free fall pointed uh, downwards, means in the opposite direction to the uh, positive direction of axis y. So let us consider this in more details and start with the uh, quantifying the conditions. Hello. <clears throat> so maybe let us consider this process in more details. This will be x, y. Here will be some projectile trajectory. And it starts from point zero, so it's from the origin of the system of coordinates. We have some vector v naught vector, which is initial velocity vector, at some angle theta to the horizon. Obviously, this vector will have some projection on axis x and y. So we will have v x naught and here will be v y naught at the initial moment of time. So if we move to point, let's say this point will be a, uh, let's call it amplitude point where we reach the maximum height of the trajectory over the horizon, uh, what will happen? Taking into account that our acceleration g is pointed downwards, uh, it will affect only y component of uh, our initial velocity vector. Um, x component will remain constant. So means that at maximum point of this trajectory, uh, we will not have any component of, um, like y component of velocity, but it will be still vx naught. And obviously, if we let this projectile flow further, uh, it will go downwards. So at some point, let's say, b, here will be the same component of v x naught projection because it doesn't change, it stays constant. And here will be some v uh, y, let's call it b, uh, projection of the uh, velocity vector in this point b. It will be v 
b vector uh, on axis y, uh, which it will gain by uh, accelerating under free fall conditions, uh, but it will be already in the opposite direction. So initially, um, component x y uh, v y was uh, a long axis y, and now it goes uh, in the opposite direction because it starts to fall down. So taking this into account, we can um, write down the uh, general expression for position vector r as a function of time, r naught plus v naught vector times t plus a vector times t squared divided by 2, and consider that r naught is equal to 0 because we start from um, this trajectory motion from the origin of the sinking point. Then we don't need to have this term. It will be equal to 0. So now let us consider v naught uh, vector, and in particular, its projection on axis um, x and, and y. So we can write that v x naught is equal to v naught means magnitude value of the initial velocity vector times cosinus theta, which is angle between velocity vector and horizon. And what is important, this remains constant. It doesn't change over time. <clears throat> so obviously for V Y naught, we can write that V naught magnitude of the velocity vector times sinus theta. This is not going to be constant because along the same direction we have this acceleration of free fall. Uh, now let us write the expression for velocity along axis y as a function of time. So we can write that v y is equal to v y naught plus a times t. A in our case, until uh, so this expression will be valid until we reach point a maximum uh, point of the trajectory amplitude height. And instead of a here, we can write minus uh, g because that is our acceleration aligned along axis y. So here we can write that it will be v y naught minus j times t. Uh, if we consider already v y as uh, y component of the velocity vector after point A, so when projectile moves further from point A, uh, that will be just minus g times t, because uh, we don't have any initial um, velocity in uh, y direction at point A. So we consider first the situation for y components of like, uh, our uh, velocity vector. Um, before it reaches maximum point of uh, trajectory, then it stops, it doesn't move. It stops means it doesn't move along axis y, it reaches highest point. It's still moving along axis y, this vx doesn't change, it remains constant. But y component is equal to zero, and then it just starts to fall down. <clears throat> so now, taking into account this general description of the system, we can uh, proceed further and consider some uh, y and x uh, ranges of this projectile motion. So let's see what it is. If we have some projectile, x is x and y, here is our velocity vector, angle theta, point A, amplitude point, and let's consider also point F, like final point of this trajectory. So here is the height 
of the trajectory. So it's y range of the trajectory, and here is the x range of the trajectory. Let's call it r. So that is the maximum length, which, like the, the length of the product motion along axis x. So let us define these parameters. Let's start from h. Uh, we know that at uh, point A, let us say that time when this projectile reaches point A will be equal to sorry, TA, so to define it specifically, it will be TA. So in time TA, projectile will reach its maximum uh, height. Then we know that VY at ta will be equal zero so it will reach maximum height and will not move further along axis y so taking into account this equation and substituting ta instead of t we can write that uh, sorry zero is equal to v y naught minus g times T. Uh, we need to recall that v y naught is actually v naught magnitude of the initial velocity vector times sinus theta angle between velocity vector and um, horizontal horizon. So that will be v naught times sinus theta minus g times t, t a here we need to write t a because it's specific time when projectile reaches the highest point of the trajectory so based on this equation we can express t a this moment of time as v naught times sinus theta divided by g so that is uh, this time when projectile reaches the next point defined by point A uh, as a function of initial magnitude of initial velocity, uh, its orientation with respect to horizon, and uh, acceleration of free flow. <clears throat> so now we can move to the kinematic equation of this uh, projectile along axis y. We know that y is equal to y naught plus v y naught times t plus um, acceleration times t squared divided by 2. Uh, instead of a, we can substitute minus g. So that will be y naught plus v y naught times t minus g times t squared divided by 2. <clears throat> we also know that y naught is equal to 0 because it starts from the uh, origin of the system of coordinates. And we know that uh, v y naught is given by uh, v naught times sinus theta. So we can uh, now substitute here also expression for TA. And that will be our maximum height because uh, if it defines the position of our object with respect of axis Y, uh, at, we know that at time TA we have the highest point A, so this coordinate of point A along axis Y will be H, the highest point of the trajectory. Now let us substitute instead of VY naught and instead of TA uh, their expressions. So we can write that H is equal to V naught magnitude of the velocity vector times sinus theta 
times TA, what is TA, is given here. So it will be V naught times sinus theta divided by G. Then we have additional component originated from free fall acceleration. So it will be G divided by 2 times TA squared. So it will be V naught times sinus theta divided by G in second power. Okay, so now let us open this parenthesis. So keep in mind here we cancel out with this G because it's in the numerator. And we have the following. We have V naught square times sinus square theta divided by G minus minus uh, V naught square sinus square theta divided by 2G. So what we have eventually is just one half of V naught square times sinus square theta divided by G. So this is our uh, expression for uh, the maximum height in uh, trajectory. And now we can go further and use this uh, also in consideration for time TA uh, for the purpose of determining the max, this X range uh, R, the length of the trajectory along axis X. So let us come back to uh, our plot and think about this. If it takes time TA from initial moment of time T0 uh, to reach for projectile from initial point reach the point A in the top of the trajectory, that will be the same time if we let this projectile move further to reach the final point. So <clears throat> it took some time to uh, stop the projectile motion along axis Y because of free fall acceleration. And then we have just free falling this projectile further along axis Y and uh, final point of the trajectory will be reached in the same interval of time. So if we introduce some time TF, means time when projectile reaches the final point of the trajectory, that will be equal to uh, TA times two. So we will have twice longer uh, TF than TA. So let us write it here. TF will be equal to two TA, and we know that TA is given as V naught times sinus theta divided by G. So it will be two times V naught sinus theta divided by G. So that is for time when the projectile reaches the final point of the trajectory. Now, we consider the X projection of the position vector. So we know that it's X equal to X naught plus V X naught times T plus A times T squared divided by two A X. <clears throat> so in this case, what we have X naught is equal to zero because it starts from the origin of system of coordinates. V X naught, we know what is V X naught, that is equal to V naught, magnitude of initial velocity vector times cosine of angle theta uh, times T. And A X, in this case, what will be A X? 
What do we put instead of AX? So let us come back to our original figure here. Let's see, it. yes. So you see this uh, G. This aligned perfectly along axis Y means its projection on axis Y will be minus G and projection of vector G on axis X will be zero because it's perpendicular. Sign theta. G sign theta. No, no sign theta, so you see, you miss it with the velocity, initial velocity vector that guy is oriented at some angle t. That's why we have projection on both axis x and axis y. If velocity vector is oriented vertically, like perpendicular to axis x, then we would not have any projection on axis x. It would be just projection on axis y. So we have similar case for g, acceleration of freefall. It's oriented downwards parallel to axis y. So that's why all projection of uh, it has only projection on axis y. And axis x is projection is equal to zero. Means there is no acceleration of um, a change of velocity component along axis x. That's why we mentioned that um, vx remains constant it doesn't change over time so one once we discuss this part we can come back and write that ax is equal to zero because projection of um, acceleration uh, free fall acceleration vector on axis x is equal to zero so eventually we have position x equal to v naught times cosine theta times t. So that is uh, the form of kinematic equation for this uh, projector along axis x. And now if we want to know this maximum uh, range for uh, x direction, we need to um, consider time tf, time when our projector is not here, when our projector reaches the final point of the trajectory. <laughs> so we can write that R, length of the trajectory along axis X, will be equal to V naught magnitude of initial velocity vector times cosinus theta times Tf. And we know that Tf is given by this equation. So we can substitute it here. So let's write here. It will be V naught times cosinus theta times 2 times V naught times sinus theta divided by G. So what do we have here? We have V naught square times two cosinus theta times sinus theta divided by G. So here, this term, we can use uh, the trigonometric identity and uh, that tells us that two times cosinus alpha times sinus alpha is equal to sinus two alpha. So we can use this identity in order to simplify our equation. So that will be V naught square times sinus two theta divided by G. So that is the expression for the length of the trajectory along axis x. And now we can take a look at this um, equation. So the thing is that 
uh, if we want to know to find the angle which will result in the maximum x range uh, it's quite clear from the situation what we need to so sinus doesn't matter of which angle its maximum value is possible is union so when it will reach unity when argument of sinus is equal to which angle sinus 90 degrees yes so that means that 2 times theta should be equal to 90 degrees in order to get maximum value for x range and from here automatically we get that the angle of orientation of initial um, velocity vector of the project projectile should be arranged at 45 45 degrees with respect to the uh, horizon so that is the condition at, uh, which will result in the maximum x range for the projectile tra trajectory um, when we uh, consider projectile motion as motion in uh, two-dimensional uh, space with uh, constant acceleration <clears throat> So let us summarize. Today, we kind of continued our previous discussion and uh, introduced in a vector form velocity and acceleration vectors. So that case allows us to quantify um, position of an object in a system with many dimensions, two and more, like two and three. Uh, in order to uh, do some calculations, we obviously need to split uh, position vector, initial position vector, um, velocity vector, and acceleration vector into components uh, by applying these unit vectors. Uh, but uh, also we have shown how it looks in the vector form when we kind of end up um, different vectors originated from different uh, contributions, the initial position vector, a velocity vector times, initial velocity vector times time, and acceleration vector times uh, t squared divided by t. Of course, it's in the scope of our model considering constant acceleration vector. <clears throat> and uh, based on this derived kinematic equation in a vector form, we discuss the uh, motion in two-dimensional space with constant acceleration, which is the classical example uh, projectile motion at some angle to the horizon. So next time we will consider another type of motion uh, in two-dimensional space, which is rotational motion. And that is one of also very important examples, which uh, you will deal quite often with in the future. So thank you very much for attention and see you next time on Friday.